hey, do you want to know how much stuff goes in my life? Like 10 minutes. All right. So if you just, uh, now you're just seeing the recording because I just forgot to record the whole first 10 minutes. So dang it. Um, it was just about um, poems and the patterns of the poems. But luckily, we're going to go through um, other patterns of poems at the end of this. So no big deal. No harm fouled. You'll just see it again. Um, or for the first time, everyone else sees it again. All right. So how are the two poems, Rhythm and Going Banana, similar? Tell me one way they are similar. Zach, nice and loud. What is one way they are similar? I disagree. A what? Yes. They both have a B line. How else are they similar? This is not a trick question. It's super, like the answer is really simple. How else are they similar? Oh. Zach? They both rhyme? Yeah, they both have rhyming words in them. Remember, blank verses and free verses, do those poems necessarily rhyme? No. Do haikus necessarily rhyme? No, but these two, this limerick and this quatrains, or synchanes, is that how, no, this is the quatrains. These both have rhyming words. Now, how are they different? Give me, I can think of three ways right now they're different. How is, what is one way these two poems are different? What is, Burchell, what's one way they're different? One of them has more lines. Yeah, the first one has five, the second one has eight. How's another way that they're different, Ava? Yeah, they have different rhymes. Um, like the pattern of the rhymes is different. Remember the first one was A, A, B, B, A. The second one was A, B, C, B, D, E, F, E. So the pattern of the rhymes was different. And then lastly, I'm thinking about that big space between the two, or that big space in the middle of going bananas. What's that called? The one poem is broken into blank and the other one is not. What is that called? We already talked about it once. What is that thing called? Someone besides Zachary, because he's already answered lots of questions for me. What are those things called? They start with an S. What are those things called? We already talked about it once. Marissa, what are those things called when you break up Poems into different sections. What are the sections called? Starts with an S. We already went over it once today, literally 10 minutes ago. Molly, stanzas. The first poem only has one stanza. The second one has two. What is something we find out about Ryan in the first poem? What is something we find out about Ryan in the first poem? Ava. Yeah, perfect. That's exactly the right answer I was looking for. We find out in the first line of the first poem that he is seized by the rhythmic beat. He is on the poetry train. We find that out right away. Thank you, Miss Ava. That was a good answer. All right. We are moving on. I want you to go to... The skateboard poem. Go to the skateboard poem, please. And we're going to talk about author's purpose with this skateboard poem. The skateboard poem's on 155. I'm going to reread it to you. Skateboard. Hip, hop, pop, and ollie. Can't stop, got to go with the flow. Fast, past, above, over, above, skim, grinding the curves and grooves. I've got the moves. Remember, that's a concrete poem because it's in the shape of a um, skateboard. But... Someone tell me what is author's purpose in general. An author writes something to what, what, or what? What is an author's purpose to write something? What are those three words? Entertain, inform, and Isaac happened to be typing them. It's persuade, Isaac, but thank you for the first one. An author writes something to entertain us, inform us, or persuade us. To inform a reader, they want to share information. Persuade, they want you to think or act a certain way. And entertain, obviously, they just want us to enjoy it. So, after me just reading the skateboard poem, why do you think the author wrote the skateboard poem? Was it to inform us about skateboards? 
Was it to persuade us about skateboards or was it just an entertaining poem for us to read, for us to enjoy? I want everyone's hand up. I want everyone to take 30 seconds and tell me, why do you think the author wrote this poem? Everyone should have a vote for this one. So to inform us about skateboards, to persuade us about skateboards, to entertain us. On the count of three, I want everyone to say their answer. One, two, three. Entertain, you're right. They're not trying to teach us how to ride a skateboard. They're definitely not trying to persuade us. They're literally just, this is just a fun poem for us to read about how Ryan likes to skateboard. We know it's not persuading because nowhere in there does it say you need to do this, right? Or you should do this, or I think you should. It is just a fun poem. It's supposed to be exciting. It's supposed to just tell us about his skateboard. So even though it's poetry, there can be a um, author's purpose for every single one of these poems on why their author wrote them. Obviously these poems are basically to entertain, right? Because none of these are really informing or persuading us. All right. And now I want you to go to the last pages before the guide, 162 and 163. Go to those two pages for me. We're going to talk a little bit about theme and like what the overall poem was kind of about. So think, the poem was all about how Ryan just wanted to write and write and write. Well, not necessarily wanted to, but all his brain was just full of ideas. Remember, they said it was like a fish. His brain was swimming with ideas. He just needed to write and write and write. And he couldn't stop, couldn't stop, couldn't stop until he actually was told to write. And then suddenly his mind went blank. So overall, the theme or the lesson is inspiration to write is powerful, but it comes and goes. Because are you always going to have an amazing idea in your head? No, but sometimes when you have an amazing idea, you just have to write it down, right? Right. So I want you to look at the illustration on page 163. How does this illustration help us understand how Ryan's feeling? First, someone explain the illustration to me. What's happening here on 163? Evan, explain it nice and loud for me. He kind of looks like he's going insane and he's confused as heck. That's the other one. I want 163. Oh, 163. He looks like he's really relieved. Yes, he like he wants to go to bed now. that's a great word. He looks relieved. He's literally laying on a giant stack of papers and he's just like, ah, life is finally fine. He feels good. And now that he has turned in his poetry, you know, he finally has a break. He doesn't have to continue to think and think and think. So that's a really good way to say that he feels relieved. He's basically asleep on the stack of the poems. He can finally rest, which is super awesome. Go him. All right. And does everyone, I want everyone to go to the next page and let's revisit these um, Ryan O'Brien's Guide uh, Poetic Forms. Remember, this is here in case you still want to do your extra credit poem, which you have till Friday. Oh, Mrs. Kripo, I don't know what type of poem to write. Guess what? You could go through it right here and revisit it. So can someone tell me when did inspiration start, like strike Ryan? When was he like, oh, I should write a poem right now? When did inspiration strike Ryan throughout the story? When did he strike Ryan? When did it strike Ryan? Rochelle? Okay, when he was eating lunch in the cafeteria. When else did it strike him to write a poem, Zachary? Right. In the very beginning, he was just struck by the rhythmic beat and his little brother was drumming and his dog was there. When else did it strike him some inspiration besides lunch and besides with his family? When else did it strike, Kylan? When he was in playing outside at recess, yeah, by the basketball hoop. Olive. When he was riding his bike. When he was riding his bike. Evan. When he was skating. When he was skateboarding. When else, Landon? Dinner. During dinner when he was having his peas. When else, Brichelle? When he was in the bathroom, remember he wrote on the mirror, he wrote on the lovely shower curtain. When else, Miss Marissa? 
on his friend's shirt. So basically, when did it strike? It struck at all, all what? When did it strike? Someone tell me, just say it. Okay, Landon, if I hear that water bottle again, it's going to go in the trash. I'm just letting you know it's about to go in the trash, okay? So I don't want to hear it, buddy. Okay, that's not what I was looking for. When did inspiration strike him? Was it only specific times? Oh, 1203, mm, 12.02? No, it struck all the time, randomly. He literally could not stop writing. It was just struck and struck and struck. But at the very end... The very, very end, it said PPS from Ryan. If you show your teacher, or it said, have, not, I meant 84, not 85. It says, have fun, happy reading, happy writing. So Ryan wants us to have fun, even though, did he have like the world's best day writing poetry? No, remember by the end, he was over it, but he still enjoyed it. So he's still encouraging us to have fun doing it. All right. Are there any questions about our lovely story? If not, I'm going to post two poems on our board. And we are going to try to find the patterns within these poems. So I need everyone, if I find, can find my remote, to feast your eyes upon my board. Friends, if you want to keep up, open your HMH book. That might be helpful to the Ryan O'Brien's Guide to Poetic Forms because we're going to try to figure out what type of poems these are. All right, if you're here at home, I'm going to, or if you're at home, I'm going to move you. If you're not on the HMH guide to um, Ryan O'Brien's poetic forums, then your computer doesn't need to be open, just for the record. The only reason your computer should be open is if you are on that. So I found this lovely poem for us, and it is called Pesky Pear. Okay, I'm going to read it, and then we're going to find the pattern and see if we can figure out what type of poem it is. So, it is called Pesky Pear. There once was a pear who had fluffy hair. He liked to roll, so was put in a bowl, and that was a scare. Someone tell me, the first line, what is it obviously going to be titled? Line what? Everyone. No. A, thank you. It's obviously going to be an A. Number two is A. Did I ask any question yet? No. Are there any words that are going to be, or is there any other line that's going to be a line A as well? We still have who had fluffy hair. He liked to roll. So it was put in a bowl, and that was a scare. Are there any other lines that are going to be a line A? Say the number line, Ava. Two, because pear and hair rhyme. So this is also an A. Is there another one that might be an A line, Evan? Scare, yep. So line five, these are both A's. Line three and four are not A's. So this next line after A would obviously be a B. B. Is there another B line or is it going to be a C line, Olive? That wasn't the question. Is it going to be a B line, just like roll, or is it going to be a C line, something different? No. Molly. B for bear. B, because roll and bowl rhyme. So this is what type of poem? You should be looking at your poetic guide to Ryan O'Brien saying, and tell me what type of poem this is. It's a A-A-B-B-A -A -B -B -A poem. What type of poem is this? Kylan? Spell it. Raise your hand if you agree with her that this is the type of poem. Raise your hand if you agree with her that this is the type of poem. And this is a sin cane poem. Remember, it's pronounced silly. I agree with her. This is a sin cane poem. It's pronounced silly. So it was an A-A-B-B-A -A -B -B -A poem. Woot! Landed. Erase this. I'm going to put the next poem on the board.
I, you obviously can't. Okay, go faster, sir. All right, I don't know why I picked such a sad poem, but anyways, it's called Sometimes. I'm going to read it to you. Be thinking what lines are what. It is. I, I don't know why. I don't know why. There's really nothing very wrong. I probably should sing a song or run around and make some noise or sit and tinker with my toys or pop a couple of balloons or play a game and watch cartoons. But I am feeling sad. I don't know why. And that at all I want to do is cry. Like I said, I don't know why I picked a sad poem. Yeah, why but it so first, let's talk about, let's make it pattern first, and then we're going to see which, there's also some repetition in here. But our first line is obviously going to be in A. A. Are there any other A lines in this poem? Yes. All right, what's an A line in this poem, Ava? Yeah, here, let's, let's, uh, I'll number them for us. Yes. Okay, sentence two is also an A. I agree with that. Where's another A line? Or is there another A line? Lily? Number three. It's literally the same line as number two, so I'd hope they'd be the same type of line. Is there another A line in here, Rochelle? Number 12, yeah, cry and cry. Those are the same words. That is also an A. Is there another A line, Zach? Uh, number seven. Number seven, toys does not rhyme with cry or why. Good guess, though. They do end, it ends with a Y, but it doesn't rhyme. Oh. Evan? 11, yes. All right, so we have five A lines. We're going to move on because I'm pretty sure that's all the A lines. Line four is where we are next, and obviously after A comes... B. B. Perfect. Comes B. Are there any other B lines? Marissa, I don't know what you're typing on your computer, but you shouldn't be typing anything. Are there any other B lines? Molly. Five. Five song and wrong or B lines. Or, or, or they rhyme. Is there another B line? Yes. There is? I don't think there's another B line. Bless you. If what comes after a B line, it would be line C. Does anything rhyme with noise? What is, is there another C line? Landon. Seven toys. Seven toys. Yep. Is there another C line? No. No. All right. Line eight would be a what? D. D. Is there another D line? Yes. Which one? Nine. 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 Yep. And then. Sad. Does sad rhyme, sad rhyme with anything? No. no. So it's just its own. So this poem is not broken into stanzas. There's not those big spaces in between. It's just one big long poem. So we have an A, 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 B, B, C, C, D, D, E, A, A poem. Are there any words that um, repeat in this poem? Any repetitions that we see? Or the other one, our vocab word, what's it called? It's a what? If the thing is repeated, it's a what? Refrain. A refrain. Yes, there is a refrain line here. What is the refrain line, Ava? Yeah, I don't know why. That is our refrain it's line. It's chorus. <laughs> or the, another word for refrain would be chorus. So there is our refrain within <laughs> that poem. Go, you people. So this was just a little breakdown of a poem. And obviously, someone. Poems sometimes don't necessarily say exactly what they're about, and you have to have some deeper thinking. So, in non-poetry form, does anyone want to tell me what this poem's about? Non-poetry form, just, just give me a rundown. Tell me what this poem's about, Molly. That this person's sad. Does the person know why they're sad? No. And, and to relieve their sadness, what does the person want to do? Right. And that is literally just what the poem's about. It's just sometimes she's sad. Sometimes she wants to cry, and that is it. All right. What? Yeah, kind no, of. No, I guess sometimes you just get sad. It's okay. Depression is like constant. You can't get rid of it. All right. Mr. Landon is going to erase the board, and I'm going to put up our next poem. No. Okay, fast. You're on freeze. I know. I need to 
need a bar stool. Oh, I can't do this. I'm too scared. Oh, this one is. All right. What the heck? Why is it supposed to be? What cool? type of poem is this? Anyone, just right off the bat. What is this, Rochelle? Concrete. Hey, are any of you Rochelle? Rochelle. It's a concrete poem because it is in the shape of what we're talking about. Remember, like the ones in the um book, it was the soccer ball and the skateboard. They were inside the soccer ball and the skateboard, but this one it's in the shape of. So this one is swimming slowly swimming it's invisible tail spiny with its venomous bite the puffer jumps out of the water into thin air so this isn't just a regular type of fish what fish is this about everyone puffer a puffer fish it literally says puffer right here i know it's kind of hard to read but this is a concrete poem and this wasn't necessarily rhyming no it's just a concrete poem because the way it's written not because it rhymes. All right, friends. We're going to write an acrostic poem together. I'm pretty sure we did one yesterday with Mrs. Kneipel's name. But we're going to do one together. What is a good word? I know. I don't know how to spell suspicious. So I don't know. Kylan. That's going to be hard to describe, though, because purple is just purple. Spaghetti? Yes. Does anyone know how to spell spaghetti? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Have you been trying to really stick your head But I do have a question. Are we doing things that rhymes with it? Well, that goes with it, or can we do any word that starts with the letter? An acrostic poem can be any word that goes with the letter that is describing what the poem is called, which is spaghetti. Mm, happy? Uh, I wouldn't say pasta's happy. I mean, because pasta, that would be personification. Pasta isn't like, pasta doesn't have feelings. Nolan? Exactly. We have A, H, and I left. Why was your hand up if you don't have an answer? Okay. Um, Zach? H for heated. Okay. Because it is hot. Most people don't eat cold pasta. Unless it's, unless it's like a noodle salad, but, you know, spaghetti is normally served warm. Evan? I for Italian. Alright, so our acrostic poem about 
spaghetti. Spaghetti is scrumptious pasta, awesome, good, heated, eat, slash edible, tasty tomato sauce, Italian. So, no, right now you can just stop while I'm teaching, okay? Because we're almost done with our lesson and I need your voice off. So, you guys did a fabulous job making this acrostic poem. Tomorrow in class, what you're going to do is first we're going to go through the questions together. There's one question on our quiz we're going to answer together. Uh, then you're going to reread your story and, or you're going to um, take the rest of it. Um, actually, I'll just project it on the board and then I'll leave the answer up there. That's besides the point. Tomorrow you're going to reread the poem. You can have it read to you or you can read it yourself and then you're going to take the quiz. With any extra time tomorrow, you can either work on your extra credit poem or you can read for AR. Friday we have the long assessment. We're going to do most of the long assessment together. Just letting you know right now, it's a hard one because it's poetry. So we're going to do a few answers together. But thank you, lovely people, for joining me. Like I said, if you're watching this recording, you missed like the first 10 minutes of the lesson because I forgot to hit record. But those first 10 minutes were us just um, doing formats or doing the, um, not formats, but I can't think of the word, but doing the, um, I can't think of the word. You interrupt me again. I'm going to be really upset. What are you thinking? Um, I can't think of what it's called, but we were just going through the types of poems and labeling A, B, C, and all that shenanigans. So we are about to end reading class. There is no homework today. Yes. Yes, I saw. It. First off, it's not a grammar meet. It's a spelling meet. And all we're doing in spelling today is um, we are going to just go and Put the letter or put the words in ABC order together. So you're just checking your own work basically. So you can watch the recording of that. Go to math. Okay. So those of you at home, go to math and watch the recording of the spelling assignment. I will see you guys later. Friends in here, make sure you have your gym shoes on. And then you should have a book out for silent reading, or you should be working on your extra credit poem. What's up, Kylan? Now can I? Yes. What's up? Yeah. Sure. Yes, I got another phone.